Well, good afternoon. Uh, I got really busy today, so um, it's now just coming up to 5.30. It is Tuesday, July the 30th, and we're going into the last book of Joshua. So today we complete the sixth book of the Bible, and then tomorrow we start in the book of Judges. Amazing. Okay, this is a bit of a chunk, so let's go straight into it. And Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and called for the elders of Israel and for their heads and for their judges and for their officers. And they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said unto all the people, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Your fathers dwelt on the other side of the flood in the old time, even Terah the father of Abraham, and the father of Nacor. They served other gods. So here's how we know Abraham, you know, was not a God-loving man. He served other gods, according to his fathers did too. And I took your father Abraham from the other side of the flood and led him throughout all the land of Canaan and multiplied his seed and gave him Isaac. And I gave unto Isaac Jacob and Esau, and I gave unto Esau Mount Seir to possess it. But Jacob and his children went down into Egypt. And I sent Moses also and Aaron, and I plagued Egypt according to that which I did among them, and afterward I brought you out. This is God talking. And I brought your fathers out of Egypt, and you came into the sea, and the Egyptians pursued after your fathers with chariots and horsemen unto the Red Sea. And when they cried unto the Lord, he put darkness between you and the Egyptians and brought the sea upon them and covered them. And your eyes have seen what I have done in Egypt, and you dwelt in the wilderness a long season. And I brought you into the land of the Amorites, which dwelt on the other side Jordan. And they fought with you, and I gave them into your hand, that you might possess their land, and I destroyed them from before you. Then Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab, arose and warred against Israel, and sent and called Balaam, the son of Beor, to curse you. But I would not hearken unto Balaam. Therefore, he blessed you still, so I delivered you out of his hand. Notice how God is in charge throughout all of this. And you went over Jordan and came unto Jericho. And the men of Jericho fought against you, the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Girgashites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. And I delivered them into your hand. I delivered them into your hand. This is God talking. And I sent the hornet before you, which drave the mouth before you, even the two kings of the Amorites, but not with thy sword, nor with thy bow. And I have given you a land for which you did not labor, and cities which you did not build. And ye dwell in them of the vineyards, and olive yards which you planted not do you eat, which you planted not do you eat. Now therefore fear the Lord, and serve him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods of your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord, and it's spelt in all capital letters, God. And even if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served, which are on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And if it seem... Oh, sorry. And the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For the Lord our God, he it is that brought us up and our fathers out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, which did those great signs in our sight and preserved us in all way wherein we went 
and among all the people through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out from before all from before us all the people, even the Amorites which dwelt in the land. Therefore will we also serve the Lord, for he is our God. And Joshua said unto the people, You cannot serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions nor your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve strange gods, then he will turn and do you hurt and consume you after that he hath done you good. Notice that. This is Joshua speaking for the Lord, and he's saying, the Lord will do you hurt. Don't ever think that the Lord is incapable of anything because he's capable of whatever he wants to do within his character and his judgment and his justice and his love. And the people said unto Joshua, Nay, but we will serve the Lord. And Joshua said unto the people, You are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen the Lord to serve him. And they said, We are witnesses. Now therefore put away, said he, the strange gods which are among you, and incline your heart unto the Lord God of Israel. And the people said unto Joshua, The Lord our God will we serve, and his voice will we obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day, and set them a statute and an ordinance in Shechem. And Joshua wrote these words in the book of the law of God, and took a great stone and set it up there under an oak that was by the sanctuary of the Lord. And Joshua said unto all the people, Behold, this stone shall be a witness unto us, for it hath heard all the words of the Lord which he spake unto us. It shall be therefore a witness unto you, lest you deny your God. So Joshua let the people depart, every man unto his inheritance. And it came to pass after these things that Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died, being a hundred and ten years old. And they buried him in the border of his inheritance, in timnath Sarah, which is in Mount Ephraim, on the north side of the hill of Gash. And Israel served the Lord all the days of Joshua, and all the days of the elders that overlived Joshua, which had known all the works of the Lord that he had done for Israel. And the bones of Joseph, which the children of Israel brought up out of Egypt, buried they in Shechem, in a parcel of ground which Jacob bought of the sons of Hamor, the father of Shechem, for a hundred pieces of silver, and it became the inheritance of the children of Joseph. And Eliezer, the son of Aaron, died, and they buried him in a hill that pertained to Phinehas, his son, which was given him in Mount Ephraim. Amen. Amen. I don't think I need to say too much more about that because I kind of intervened during the reading. But notice how before dying, Joshua made sure that they fully understood that this commitment that they're going to make, that this covenant that is going to be agreed upon has serious repercussions if they fail and start to worship other gods that they will suffer hurt from the Lord. As it says in 20, if you forsake the Lord and serve strange God, then he will turn and do you hurt and consume you after that he hath done you good. You know, the consuming and the hurt for us now comes if we end up in that dark place where the fire burns forever in the total absence of the light of God. So this still stands, doesn't it? 
And in actual fact, if you turn against God, and this only, you know, I, this can only happen by those who have not given their heart to Jesus Christ. Because once you have, there is no power on this earth that can separate you from him. Which means you are powerless to be separated from him, no matter what you do. Now we know that there is a judgment. We know that there is a hierarchy in heaven. And we know that if you do sin, and if you do stray or backslide, your salvation is not lost. But your inheritance may not be as great as you thought it might be in heaven. I can only put it that way. Because there is no power that can separate you from the Lord. Once he says you are mine, I know your name. Your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You're in. You're in. And with the power of the Holy Spirit inside of you, I put it to you that it is absolutely impossible to turn against the Lord when you have the power, the almighty power of the Holy Spirit within you. We've been talking about miracles and good works and grace and stuff like that. And one thing that I do agree with is that the greatest miracle that can ever happen in your life is when you give yourself to Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit resides inside of you. I would say that in terms of the natural versus the supernatural, that is a supernatural act that cannot be repeated in the natural world, and therefore it qualifies as a miracle. And it is the greatest one that you can experience here on earth is to be reborn, is for the old person to die. Have you let that happen in your life? I mean, have you truly moved on in your life and know that the power of the Holy Spirit is operating within you? Is your conscience, is your guilt feeling ramped up to such a level that it's never been before in your life? And you know, only you know for sure whether or not this is so. Because that is what happens when you accept the power of the Holy Spirit in you. When you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the greatest miracle will happen when that the Holy Spirit will occupy you. And then you will be a true creation in the image of God. Man in the flesh, man in the soul, and man in the spirit. Your own trilogy, trilogy, in the image of God. That's my take on it. There may be some that differ on that, and uh, that's okay. But I don't think it's a bad thing to consider. So, have a great rest of the day. Have a good evening. Uh, we've just experienced a little bit of rain. There's supposed to be some thunderstorm and stuff going on. And uh, God knows that we need it. He knows. He knows what we need, when we need it. Everything is under his control. And it happens for a reason. And all things are for the good of us. Hello, Jack. Hello, Jack. Okay. Like I said, have a good day, have a good evening. And remember, God loves you. And I love you too. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for your likes and your comments. They are truly, truly appreciated. Bye for now and I'll speak to you tomorrow.